it's not mine, but uh, I'm organizing the Smelt Meetup in New York, and someone put their stickers, so I just brought some. Oh, I thought like you're inviting us to come to New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think, uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, so, so yeah, I mean, so the original idea was to talk about, basically, uh, everyone here knows Gatsby. Uh, I miss Gatsby and Svelte. Uh, Svelte has a meta framework called Sapper. It's not very good for static site generation, and I started building my own called uh, SSG because I choked the NPM name. It's three letters. It's very nice. Uh, but but uh, you know, I, I felt that that would not be as relevant for people who are not using Svelte, right? Like you know, um, be my guest to, pl to play with it. Uh, I, I have my own personal site uses that, um, but I think it's more more relevant for general audience to just talk about. Um, this compiled approach, um, which I think basically every framework except what for, except React is doing, and I think it's worth exploring what that is. So, do I start? Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're having some technical issues, but I think we are now done. Yeah. yeah? Um, so yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So this is compiled file in your head, um, and it's a it's kind of like a look uh, at the before and after. Um, Liha already uh, kind of gave you a little bit of that intro, so the, the, the impact of this will be less uh, impressive. But I still think, I still think it's worth going over because it's a very foundational part of Svelte. Um, uh, one of the things that I helped to do in New York, because mainly because there was no meetup in, in, in New York, and Rich Harris is, is based in New York, and I was like, I will just be very disappointed if no one, no one actually steps up. So, so I did, um, and now, and now we have this thing. So, uh, we can consider this the first meetup of the Singapore <laughs> chapter. There's one in Sweden, there's one in New York, and now it's now in Singapore. Yay! <laughs> um, okay, so, so before we get here, um, I, I, I do want to like do, do a little refresher. I think um, again, like I was planning all this like really nice intro, and then we uh, already like kind of took away a lot of it. Uh, but just <laughs> just as a quick refresher uh, of how we of how we write raw H raw JavaScript, right? Like to get anything on the page from in, in terms of raw JavaScript, we have to do sort of manual creation of, of HTML and uh, you know the, every element and then and then append it. Um, and and then if we want to if we want to add color, for example, um, we can do something like uh, this. Oh, oh, if I want if I want to remove, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna write body document body remove child. That's obvious. Um, if I want to add color uh, alongside of an existing uh, element, um, I can I can basically append child to to um, to the to the head uh, with a style element and then set the set the content of that. Um, and you can see that show up here with uh, with also with the DOM element, right? Um, and if I want to add a button, uh, I have to uh, add event listeners, right? So button dot add event listener, and then something something like that, and then you can just click this. So uh, this is what is what you do without a framework. This is the bare minimum uh, that that you can do. So the idea is to write a compiler to to write the source code that we want that compiles to this as close as possible, right? Um, and we already already had we had had a preview of that with. Um, we also talk, but we'll talk a little bit about the syntax, right? Like this is the this is the kind of thing that we want to be able to write. Um, we, we we can uh, and so so I'm going to briefly review this file syntax, and then we'll we'll go into how how it compiles out. Um, so this is how you write hello world in a basic uh, element that's kind of static. Uh, this is how you write it with with an with a attached styles, right? So each that h one is going to be styled with a color of Rebecca purple. Um, this is how you parameterize something in JavaScript and insert it into the into the DOM. So that's Svelte syntax. I, I think everyone's kind of familiar. And like, it's basically not possible to make this any more concise, right? Like, there's no use state. There's no like uh, declaration of, of anything else. Uh, and you and the the, the the way the way that you set state. Um, I'll get to that later, but but here, here's 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 here's, a, here's event listeners um, where you, where you just uh, do an on click. So that looks uh, slightly different from React, but everything else is just regular JSX and React. Um, where where you do where you do start to differ a lot from the React model is you do direct manipulation. Um, any assignment operator becomes a set state, but you don't have to write it. Um, the 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 difference goes more profound than that, um, and and for example, in React we schedule updates, right, and then we batch them together uh, for performance. This one, uh, you do more or less direct dom, dom manipulation, and we'll see what that compiles to underneath. 
Um, but that's the main, these are the main language syntaxes, like Svelte, which, uh, which kind of like regards Svelte as a language. Um, and you'll see how it, how it uh, sort of pans out. But uh, the idea is to stick to HTML as much as possible for, for tooling benefit, um, as well as uh, server-side rendering, because you're no longer executing JS uh, JavaScript in order to server-side render. You're just concatenating strings, um, because that every file is a, is, is a valid HTML file. Um, so, so yeah, OK, so uh, now we get, now we get to the compiling your head part. Uh, so what does this look like under, <laughs> under the hood? Uh, it's actually surprisingly big. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, but, but I sort of annotated uh, the important parts. Um, every component is basically considered a fragment. I don't think I have my, my, um, my mouse here. I don't know why. Um, so every component is considered a fragment. There's uh, three uh, sort of primary, I don't know what you call it, methods on that fragment. Uh, the C method creates the element, right? It basically, that's, that's a, the element function is, a, is, is an alias for document.create element. Um, the end method is for uh, mount, like you're mounting onto, a, onto, a, uh, onto some element bef uh, that's, that's existing on the DOM. Um, if, if you have the root element, there's a, there's a render method that, that does that initial mount. Um, and then there's, uh, there's D, which is uh, detaching. Like what, uh, how do you clean up after yourself as you detach? So um, every single Svelte sort of component declaration uh, must compile into like a create a mount and a, and a uh, sort of destruct, this detach, dis dismount. Um, and apart from the fragment, there's also a concept of a Svelte component. Uh, this looks extremely familiar. <laughs> um, and, it, and, it, and it runs all this stuff, as well as some other helper functions, which I, which I kind of just glossed over, uh, in an init function. And we'll, we'll, look at, we'll look at that init function. Um, but you know, it's, it's, a very, it's, very simple. It's, it's, it's a lot more class-based than, than that uh, sort of function-based, like functional programming-based model that React has. Um, but so far, this is what we know. Uh, HTML, anything that's HTML compiles to a C and M and D function. Uh, and then for anything, anything that you're mounting for the first time, you also call an init. Let's look at that init. Um, so this init function basically has all of the metadata surrounding a component. Um, you, have, uh, you have that fragment that, that, was, that, was, that was passed in. And that's, 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 um, that function is, is, is the one that was defined uh, earlier. That's create fragment over here. That's create fragment passed into the init function. Um, and then once, that, once that's invoked uh, over here, um, that's invoked over here, it's actually attached onto this magic dollar dollar sign, which, which, is, that, which, is, which is actually uh, all the way up there, which is that. Uh, this, these are basically all the internals of Svelte. You can, it's actually, I don't know if this is safe or not, but you can access them at any point in time. <laughs> and so it's just exposed to you, the, everything. Like if you, want, if, if, you want, if you want to randomly, inside of your code, randomly call like the uh, after update lifecycle method for some reason, you can. Uh, <laughs> I, th I mean, I think, I think that's just a, a, a factor of like, if you choose this double, double, do, double dollar syntax, uh, you've, You've shown that you, you're you know that you're tapping into the internals. Okay, so uh, there's there's state which like which includes a, a prop and an an update function. Actually, the update function should should be located inside here, as as well as a bunch of lifecycle callbacks, which you as a as a Svelte author, a Svelte uh, user can can write these lifecycle callbacks and just be put into an array and then you just run through this array uh, when you're when you're uh, mounting or unmounting your your component. Um, blah blah blah, and then. Uh, and then we're just going to mount the component in that init com init function. So so this is where you actually like you know put stuff on the, onto the DOM. Okay, so that init like the, the main reason I want to want to show this is like this is the f the fundamental object or class or whatever you call it of uh, of every component, right? Like it, it's and that is very similar to uh, to React. Um, okay, so let's let's get on to uh, to styles. So we move from just simple hello world to now styles. Uh, this is very already very different from React, right? Like React has no idea what styles are. Um, and uh, so over here, we the, the, the main thing we want to we want to also compile is CSS as well. So um, uh, Svelte cannot be used in a in a style tag, right? It has to be used together with a bundler. Uh, but for that for that one trade off, you get some niceties with um, with regards to um, you know being able to, to generate both your JS and your CSS and pair them together. So here we auto generate a hash version of that that class and then we put we attach it on that class together with the, the element. So the element has a very strict binding. And this is also why descendants like this is something that I did not understand when, when I first looked at this file. I was like, how do, how come the, the this H1 class doesn't leak to any any descendants? Like if I if I start this a div and this is a div 
and then I have a child of that, which is also a div. It doesn't leak. It, it just only stays at the top level. And that's because the, the, class, the, 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 the Svelte class attached there is only on that one element. So that makes a lot more sense once you, once you just looked at it before and after. OK, that's styling. Um, so now we know style tags are you add the CSS class, and then you attach the class onto the DOM element with set attribute. These are all DOM uh, APIs. Uh, parameters. So now we are not looking at static hello world. We're, we're actually putting that parameter inside of uh, that name uh, JavaScript variable. Um, and what that, what that uh, I guess, compiles to is uh, oh yeah. Th so this is this is where we were before. I just want to see. I just want you to see the nice, very nice, uh, subtle upgrade from here to a to a parameterized thing. Um, so we have to break every single part of this up. This is string variable string, right? Um, so we can see that as T O T one T two, um, and then for every every creation that we have to do, we also have to do uh, mounting. So append append append, um, and then we can detach uh, just the root because that detaches all the children as well. Um, so so that that makes a lot of sense. Um, the other thing that we should also take note of is what happens to the script tag. The script tag is just copy pasted all the way down there, um, and so so that's a very very simple programming model for. Uh, for how to create a, a function like that, uh, because um, when you when you update later, you, it's it's actually quite uh, easy. So um, anyway, so the script tag. This is part one of the script tag. Yeah, either you you paste verbatim the, the JS code down into uh, the generated JS, or uh, we get we we will get there. This is still pasting. So we also have to care about uh, event handlers. So now we've we've evolved this into like okay, there's an event handler over there, and then and then we'll define that function. Um, so we very much making we're very much making use of scope, right? Like whatever is, this is top level scope, count is top level scope, handle click is top level scope. Um, therefore, we can use it inside of our template syntax, right? Um, anything that's scope underneath that, we're, we're not going to have access to. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, so that count is used uh, generate again C and the the C function, the M function. Uh, that's all makes sense. Uh, but I also want to pay, uh, ask you to pay attention to that uh, copy pasting of that that JavaScript code. Um, it's just there's no change at all, right? Uh, which is good until you start you start having to modify things. So until now I haven't modified. I just I just only logged out a console log. Um, so now now when we introduce reactivity, uh, this is the kind of like uh, to me it's like kind of like the secret sauce of of Svelte, uh, which is that um, now you have now you have now you need to update something. Right, so there's this new p function over there. P is uh, I actually asked uh, Rich this. I was like, why why is it called p? And he was like, it's update. Uh, you was you was already taken by some some other internals, and he was like, I just give it p. Uh, <laughs> uh, set data. That's that's a alias for just uh, uh, that element dot data, and uh, that uh, that dot data attribute is actually a, a DOM attribute. I did not know that. Um, <laughs> you can you can just change uh, uh, numbers like that, um, and then. Uh, the other thing to note as well is that the, the script tag is um, is wrapped inside this instance function. This instance function gives you access to the self uh, variable, the props variable, as well as invalidate variable. Here we're only using the, the magic invalidate variable. And so this is you can think of this as like a babel transform. Like anything, the moment you spot like plus equals or, or plus, uh, sorry, plus equals, minus equals, or equals, right? Something like that, or times equals, whatever that uh, is, like sort of a modifying assi uh, assignment. Um, no, notably, it doesn't it doesn't track uh, like dot slice. No, what's what are some other like there's some array methods that, that modify the the actual array itself, right? Which is super annoying. Splice, splice. splice yeah. Um, so it doesn't do that. <laughs> so yeah, I just have to keep that in mind. Like there's only a, a whitelisted list of like assignments for which this is valid. Anyway, so they, they, they just wrap it around with the invalid, uh, invalidate function. And that tells um, the, the Svelte runtime that this whole component is dirty. Let's re-render it again. Um, but for that one piece of magic, you are, you are now able to just write vanilla HTML and, and do direct like plus, minus, equals. There's no set, up, set state or anything like that. Um, and that's very interesting. Um, and, then, and, then, and the only thing that they run is, is, this, P, is this P function for, for update. Um, and, it, and Svelte, the Svelte runtime that tells you exactly what the variable, what variable was changed. So if uh, if the count variable was changed here, so uh, at the again top level scope count and handle click, handle click is never going to change because we had declared it once. Um, but count is going to change, and if, if count is changed based on this uh, update count plus equals one, if count is changed, the Svelte runtime will say change that count is obviously truthy, uh, and then we'll just set the new count variable uh, into that DOM element there. Um, yeah, so. 
that's, that's I mean, to me, this is like the main, like, okay, I can trust this now because there is no longer any, any magic uh, because I, I've explained every single thing all the way down to the, the updates. Um, so I think this is what we've learned so far, like HTML compiles the CMD function as well as this new P function for update. Um, there's set data, set text, set whatever. There's a whole bunch of like uh, you know specialized set function, and I'll, I'll show you the place in the source code to, that you can read this. Like the one thing that we're talking about, uh, me and how were talking about earlier was that this file source code is very readable. It's it's a part-time project by Maximo three guys, um, so very very readable. Um, so uh, and then the script tag, either you do uh, verbatim pasting if you're not doing anything complicated, but the moment you do anything that requires the instance information, um, then it will just wrap it in the instance, give you access to self and props and invalidate. Uh, for anything that modifies anything, uh, modifies variables, you have to you have to invalidate the the current state. Okay, so. Uh, this is what we've learned. I've, I've added a, a few extra things that I, I, I don't cover here. Um, for example, the other very, the, the, the big new thing from Svelte 2 to Svelte 3 is the addition of this dollar sign reactive declarations. Uh, and this, this is a, such a nice hack. So basically, anytime you, anytime you, have a, you run an update, um, if, you, if you have a dollar declaration, it just, uh, the, the, Svelte, the Svelte compiler just attaches it to an update. Uh, life cycle and so it's, it's it's just an array so um, it's it's a it's a it's a very nice way to to introduce um, some reactivity like in the the view the view comparison of this would be computed computer variables for example um, but the is with just this one uh, declaration you you can you can uh, replicate a lot of that um, and I use this all the time okay um, <coughs> okay <coughs> so I mean I think I think that's that's uh, that's essentially the 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 Svelte compiler uh, pitch. Obviously, there's a lot more that um, I, I skimmed over, uh, but it is uh, basically this is the the max that I can do. Like I like to write things from scratch. Uh, I cannot write a compiler from scratch. So the best I can do is just show you before and after. And then the more you look at before and after, before and after, you have the mental model of the compiler in your head, and uh, therefore hopefully the magic goes away. Um, more resources. Uh, so the way that we get all this is you go to the repo and then you paste paste in whatever was. Uh, you know your your source code, and then you look at the compiled output, and you, you get a very strong sense of, of uh, what the what the compiler, the compiler does for you, as well as the source code inside of inside of the Svelte repo itself. Uh, let me show you like it really is um, very very simple. So those insert uh, yeah the detach method is literally just an alias for all this insert insert before. So these are all DOM, DOM elements. Um, I suppose it minifies better or something. Uh, that's why you put it in, into a function instead of using them directly. But um, yeah, it really is. It's just like a 300 lines of, of this kind of stuff. Um, so so not, nothing nothing too crazy. Um, and I think I think uh, if you want if you have something where you have uh, you can read the whole thing <laughs> in a reasonable human lifespan, then uh, Svel is Svel is for you. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Question time. Yeah. Uh, so at the beginning of uh, this talk, uh, you always mentioned that previously we have one of our members here sharing about spell and stencil, right? So have you tried to do some the same thing with stencil? No. Um, yeah, I just haven't had the time. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you think using spell? can be used for a big scale uh, does it scale <laughs> um, so I mean it, we, I, I don't know I don't care uh, <laughs> like we have to uh, I think remember the origin of uh, the provenance of felt is that it, it was created by someone who works on uh, you know interactive graphics for the New York Times uh, their emphasis is speed and uh, time to delivery more than like Oh, look at my 500 megabyte application. This is this is this scales. Um, there are different s measures of what scale means and different different goals of that, that you should they should they should optimize for. And the does it scale question doesn't really answer that kind of thing. Like so, uh, kind of one of one of the sort of prototypical examples that he always brings up is uh, how Svelte is is actually empowered uh, is actually deployed on uh, the payment systems in in Brazil where they have like 200,000. Uh, payment machines um, because Svelte compiles to such a small runtime. Like, um, it it like only the only the features that you use. Like the whole point of the whole point of doing this 
Um, right? Like, let's say, let's say I don't have any updates. I don't have that p function at all. Right? So I just don't, you don't even compile that in, into my, my raw JavaScript. That's why like, the, the, the compiled output of a Svelte app is typically a lot smaller. And therefore, you can run it on uh, a lot more devices, including uh, low power devices like, uh, like the ones that, that have seen some success. Um, but so far, I mean, there haven't been huge applications, no. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, well, I mean, I think it's, it's really up to people to, to really push their boundaries. Um, that's why it's a, it's in, it, you know, it's a newer framework. Um, I, think, I think one thing, so one thing that interests me a lot about this as an offering format um, is that um, like this is basically HTML, right? And so a Svelte uh, an, an application built with a bunch of Svelte components is basically nested HTML files, one inside of each other. And each, and um, like it's, I, want, I always want to say like this is web components done right. Um, um, where like that, where where you actually have a sense of context, um, where you actually have, have a sense of uh, like we actually have a very simple authoring model instead of uh, the kind of web components philosophy where you have to declare uh, a bunch of very complicated classes for for just a simple thing as as updating. Uh, he ha he has some examples of in his in his blog post about why he doesn't use web components, uh, which I guess answers the stencil question as well. Stencil does essentially that, but focus on web components. Um, so. I mean, so I'm very interested in this, uh, using this format for writing um, static site generators, right? Because um, this is a really good layout format. Like, uh, the moment I can declare, um, the moment I can declare this, and by the way, this becomes a prop, right? So anything that passed in that says, like, my component uh, name equals, and then some, some data object, I can then use inside of here, right, as uh, together with syntax. Um, this becomes a very flexible layout format for any sort of content um, that, that also takes care of, of styling and transitions and animations, which is, I think, like, everything I ever want from a, <laughs> from a framework. So that's what I, the, the, where I'm at right now is Svelte for sites, React for apps. Yeah. One more question? OK. Oh, we're done. Thank you. <laughs> So thank you, Sean. Uh, don't worry, you're still safe.